Habib would not allow a moment to pass except in the remembrance of Allah. And he would always counsel his students to make use of the time that they have and not to waste it. He once commented that there are, that there are only two groups of people who know the value of time, the Sufis and the English. The resultant blessings of time were witnessed by students. Once one of his students observed that his dhikr would run into the thousands and this was just between the Adhan and the Akama. And he was asked about this and he replied that Allah has made time like an elastic band for his awliya who can stretch it as they want. Those blessed with inner sight would marvel at the light upon his face and would recognize the greatness of sainthood within him, commenting that this is the face of a Qutb. It was for such reasons like the light of Jamal upon him that Habib would have often have to, as a young man, veil his face from others. Then Habib travelled with his Sheikh to Indonesia when he was less than 20 years of age, where again he received from many of the Alawi scholar masters. Every teacher would honour him and would provide plenty of glad tidings for him. He then returned to Qaidun and remained with his Sheikh Habib Abdullah bin Tahir anhu, learning and teaching in the Rabat there where students of knowledge benefited from him greatly. Habib would often be found in the port of Maqalla in Hadramaut, the seaport, when setting out for a journey or returning from one. At such times, he would often meet with the Gnostic Habib Ahmad bin Mohsin al-Haddar radiallahu anhu. Now Habib Ahmad bin Mohsin al-Haddar radiallahu anhu, he was a saint, a Gnostic, a man of tremendous spiritual power. And he was from Habib's very, very, very special mashaykh. Since Habib Ahmad bin Mohsin al-Haddar was the Sheikh al-Fat for Habib Ahmad al-Mashur. He was the Sheikh of the spiritual opening for Habib Ahmad al-Mashur al-Haddad It is related that once Habib Ahmad bin Mohsin al-Haddar, he gave Habib Ahmad al-Mashur a, a, a subha, a tasbih. And Habib would keep that tasbih in a locked box in East Africa. One day, Habib opens his box and finds that it's no longer there. Saddened at this and not finding it anywhere else, he radiallahu gave up on the matter until one day he happened to be in Maqalla visiting his Sheikh and lo, he saw the very same subha in the hands of Habib Ahmad. Habib Ahmad bin Mohsin Haddar radiallahu The Sheikh smiled and said, one day I wanted a subha to pray on and I realized that I gave my only one to you. So I reached my hand into your box and took it from there. SubhanAllah. Then, as time passed, Habib traveled to East Africa in 1347 Hijri, which corresponds to approximately 1928 of the uh, English calendar. And he traveled to the port of Zanzibar, where the people received Habib with love and respect. And it was the month of Ramadan, where he began teaching the tafsir in the main mosque. He started the tafsir with Surah Al-Fatiha, and he spoke for 15 days about one verse. 15 days about one verse. The blessed age of, of Habib Ahmad Mursur al Haddad at that time was 22 years old. Much of Habib's discourses and correspondences revolved around the Quran. Allah had opened the doors of Ilm, Ilm al Duni. And Habib had, a sh Habib had a share that he received from his glorious grandfather, Sayyidina Imam Ali radiallahu anhu, may Allah know his face, who said regarding Surah Al-Fatiha, were I to write an explanation of the dot which the pen makes in writing the Bismillah of Surah Al-Fatiha, it would weigh down 70 camels. In later life, his family would recall how he would, after the prayer, explain the meanings of the verses that, that he would have recited after the Fatiha and then he would ask one of the sons to get a copy of a tafsir and then they would see the, what the, uh, the commentators have uh, said about these particular verses. The connection that Habib had with the Quran can be explained by some of his own words. As for those Imams who, whose clear hearts have been opened to the understanding of the speech of Allah the Exalted and the delight of communing with him, they have in their recitation of the Quran night and day the most, subl most sublime fount and the sweetest and most satisfying nourishment. The, the mighty Quran is the wellspring of their hearts, the banishment of their sorrows and their supreme delight in this world. This was the state of the companions of the Prophet He also advised all Muslims 
especially those who aspire to the way of the afterlife, that they should make a regular habit of reciting part of the Quran, however small, every night and every day, taking care to be attentive and intone it correctly, since this, since this brings an abundant reward and constitutes a close discourse a close discourse with the Lord of with the Lord of Lords. And he would also advise those who had an inclination towards knowledge to make sure that they looked into the reputable tafsirs of the Quran in order to gain some understanding of the speech of Allah. Habib Ahl Mashur radiallahu he returned to Africa whilst on his way to Hajj in the year 1351 Hij Hijri, which is 1932 of the English calendar. He entered the main port of um, sorry, he entered the main Kenyan port of Mombasa and from there he went to meet Habib Saleh bin Alawi Jamal al in Lamu. And he was a great scholar and da'i. And he is from the students of the Qutb Imam Ali bin Muhammad bin Hussain al Habshi. And Imam Ali al Habshi is the composer of the Mawlid Sharif Simt al Dur. Habib Saleh was also the founder of the first school for Islamic learning in East Africa. Habib Saleh now was at, a, was at a grand age at this time and he ordered his son to bring all the students out to receive and welcome Habib Ahl Mashur He then prayed for him and gave him the ijazah after which he placed him forward and so Habib led them in the Zohar prayer. Habib continued the journey for the Hajj. In later life, others who traveled with Habib on the Hajj would relate that when he would enter the Haram of Makkah, the Kaaba itself would come into motion welcoming the Imam of the time to its sanctuary. Habib whispered to his student once, do you see how the Kaaba is welcoming me? However, concerns on the state of people in Africa did not leave, did not leave him. On his way to the Hajj, Habib Ahmad Mashu wrote, wrote to Habib Aliwi bin Muhammad al-Haddad expressing his, expressing his concern and saying that the coastlands of Africa were in a state of imminent crisis, that the Muslims had been targeted by missionaries and deviant sect and many had left their religion or their aqidah was confused. So it was after that Hajj, with, by permission from the Prophet that Habib Ahl Mashur returned back to Africa. When Habib returned to East Africa, <clears throat> he made Mombasa his residence. Now at this point, we must make mention of the last of Habib's greatest teachers. The Qutb of the time, the Ghaus, Bahr al-Mahid, the Sayyid the Imam Habib Umar bin Ahmad bin Abi Bakr bin Smith radiallahu anhu, a leading Gnostic, a shining star of Wilaya. Not only was, a real, well, not only was he a realized spiritual master, but he possessed great learning in all of the four madhabs and he was the chief qadi, the chief judge in Zanzibar and he was often called to go overseas to settle disputes in Muslim lands due to his incredible insight and knowledge of fiqh. Thus he became the de facto chief justice of all Islamic East Africa. He was a true man of Allah and one before whom all pretenses and illusions faded. It is related that once Habib Umar bin Smet asked his student to move his chair from its normal position to the other side of the room. When the student had, had done this, Habib Umar immediately ordered him to put back his chair as it was in the original position. The student did as he was, as he was told and then he looked at Habib Umar bin Smet and he found tears in his eyes. And he asked Habib Umar what the matter was. And Habib Umar replied that when, the chair, when his chair had been moved, he saw the whole of the Malakut changing its position with the movement of the chair. Habib Ahl Mashur would show the utmost etiquette and love before his sheikh and he had an immense rabita connection with him. People would observe that when Habib Ahl Mashur was in the same house as, as Habib Umar, all in different rooms, whenever Habib Umar Mismet would stand, Habib Ahl Mashur would stand. Whenever his sheikh would sit, he would do likewise. This is despite the fact that there were walls between the sheikh and the murid. Habib would refuse to go upstairs, would, would, refuse, would refuse to go up up the stairs of a house if, he's knew, if he knew that his sheikh Habib Umar Smith was downstairs and he would never ever eat in front of his sheikh and if he had to he would go out and drink out of sight of Habib Umar this was a tremendous other than respect that he showed when greeting his sheikh he would kneel he would kneel down and greet him and in gatherings he would sit where the shoes of uh, Habib Umar Smith were he never sat directly inside but where the shoes were the, that's that is where Habib Ahmad Shah would sit Habib visited, visited Habib Umar Smith frequently in Zanzibar and in the Comoro Islands. And Habib Umar bin Smith visited Habib Ahmad Shur in Kenya and Uganda also. 